this is the second lesson of unit two, which is about theory of supply. Supply is the amount of uh, products that producers or sellers are willing and able to sell at a given price during a specified period of time. Supply and quantity supplied are two different concepts. Supply refers to the relationship between the price of a commodity and quantity supplied, while quantity supplied refers to a specific amount of a product that producers or sellers are willing and able to sell at a specific price. The supply schedule is a tabular representation that shows the different quantities of a commodity that is supplied at different prices. Suppose this is the supply of orange by one farmer in one warada per week. Here, when the price of a kilogram of orange is per 10, then the farmer supplies 2 kilograms. And as price increases from 10 to 20, then the supply of orange increases from 2 to 3. And when the price increases to 30, then the quantity supplied for orange increases from 3 kg to 4 kg. And the opposite holds true. That means as price of a kilogram of orange decreases, then the quantity supplied for orange will decline. And as price of a kilogram of orange decreases from 20 to 10, then the quantity supplied for orange declines from 3 kg to 2 kg. From this information, as price of a kilogram of orange increases, then the farmer or the producers are highly encouraged or motivated with the rise in the price and they will supply more of a commodity. And as price of a commodity declines, they will be highly discouraged and they will offer less of a commodity. Now let's see the supply schedule. Just represent all the values of the market price and the values of quant supplied in the x and y axis to plot the supply curve. So as price increases, then quant supplied will also increase. As price increases from 20 to 30, quant supplied also increases from 3 kg to 4. And the opposed holds true. That means as price declines from 30 to 20, quant supplied will decline from 4 kg to 3. And as price declines from 20 to 10, the quant supplied declines from 3 to 2. So from this, we can see there is a direct relationship between the price of a commodity and quantity supplied. As a result, the slope of the supply curve is positive. That means the slope of the supply curve is positive due to the direct relationship between the price of a commodity and quantity supplied. The market supply is the sum of individual supply. Now let's see the supply function. The supply function shows a mathematical relationship between supply of a commodity and those factors that affect supply of a commodity, such as price of a commodity, price of related commodity, income of the producer, tax imposed by the government, and the likes. Now let me show you the way of deriving the supply function from the given supply schedule. When we plot the supply curve, we represent the value of price in the y-axis and the value of quantity supplied in the x. Now, the first step to derive the supply function is calculating the slope of the supply function. The slope is calculated by dividing the vertical difference, which is change in y, for the horizontal difference, which is change in x. Change in y is y final minus y initial divided by the change in x is x final minus x initial. Now, by taking any two coordinates, we can calculate the slope of the supply function. Let's take this 10 as y initial and this 20 as y final. Let's take this 2 as x initial and this 3 as x final. And when we substitute this information on this formula, the value of y final is 20 minus y initial is 10 divided by the value of x final is 3 minus x initial is 2. Then we left with 10 and this is the slope of the supply function. Now for a linear equation which is represented in the form of y is equal to ax plus b, the coefficient of the variable x later a stands for the slope of a function. Hence y is equal to 
the slope is 10 x plus b now by taking any coordinates from this schedule we can calculate the y intercept b because for a linear equation which is represented in the form of y is equal to ax plus b later b the constant number stands for the y intercept now let's take the first coordinate which is 10 and 2 now the value of y is 10 which is equal to 10 multiplied by the value of x which is 2 plus b and this will give you 10 which is equal to 20 plus b and the y intercept b will be 10 minus 20 which is equal to b then minus 10 is the y intercept so we have the equation which is y is equal to 10 x minus 10 this is our our function when we convert it into our lesson we represented y with price and x with quantity supplied and this is minus 10 and this is actually the supply function but we have to convert it into the form of quantity supplied equals to form so in order to put in quantity supplied equals to form let's leave this 10 quantity supplied as it is and when we put this minus 10 to the left we get plus 10 so the quantity supplied equals to 10 quantity supplied equals to p plus 10 when we divide both sides for 10 for 10 then we left with quantity supplied which is equal to 1 over 10 plus 10 over 10 is 1 so this is our supply function 1 over 10 p plus 1 which is equal to quantity supplied another information we can identify the, the slope of the supply function from the given supply function how the slope of the supply function is the reciprocal of the coefficient of price the coefficient of price is 1 over 10 and the reciprocal of 1 over 10 is 10 so so it is important information for the calculation of the price elasticity of supply at a point so we have to identify the slope of the supply function from the given supply function now let's rise to the law of supply the law of supply states that other things remain unchanged or ceteris paribus as price of a commodity increases then quantity supplied will also increase and as price of a commodity decreases quantity supplied will also decline so other things remain unchanged there is a direct relationship between the price of a commodity and quantity supplied let's see the exceptions to the law of supply these are violations of the law of supply the law of supply states that ceteris paribus other things remain unchanged as price increases then quantity supplied will also increase but as price of a commodity declines then quantity supplied will also decline but for these commodities the law of supply is violated or these conditions and commodities are against the law of supply that means as price of a commodity increases then the quantity supplied will decline or or remains unchanged and with the fall in the price of a commodity then quantity supplied will will increase or it remains unchanged for example one of the exceptions to the law of supply is perishable goods perishables are those goods that we cannot use for a long period of time or those goods that loses their value while we use for a long period of time or that we cannot store for a long period of time for example banana orange tomato all these are considered as perishables so with the rise in the perishables then the quantity supplied of a commodity may not increase or with a fall in the price of perishables the quantity supplied will not decline agricultural goods are against the law of supply that means with increase in price of agricultural commodities quantity supplied will decline or it remains unchanged and with the fall in the price of agricultural commodities then quantity supplied will increase or it remains unchanged auxiliary goods are against the law of supply that means with the price 
increase in oxygen goods, then quant supply will decline or it remains unchanged. And with the fall in the price of oxygen goods, the quant supply will increase or it remains unchanged. Artistic goods are against the law of supply. That means as price of artistic goods increase, then the quant supplied for artistic goods will not increase or it remains unchanged. And with the fall in the price of artistic goods, then the quant supplied for artistic goods will not decline or it remains unchanged. Now let's see the determinants of supply. Here we are going to classify the determinant of supply into two called the own price determinant of supply and the non-own price determinant of supply. The own price determinant of supply also called the change in quant supplied is caused by the change in price of a commodity only. Change in quant supplied is caused by change in price of a commodity only and it makes a movement along a fixed supply curve. Here, when the price of a kilogram of orange increases from 10 to 20. Quant supplied for orange increase from 2 to 3 is a movement from point A to point B. As price of a kilogram of orange increase from 20 to 30, then the quant supplied for orange increase from 3 to 4 is a movement from point B to C. As price of a kilogram of orange decreases from 30 per to 20, quant supplied for orange decrease from 4 kilogram to 3 is a movement from point C to B. And finally, when the price decreases from 20 to 10, then quant supplied declines from, from 3 kilogram to 2 kilogram. It's a movement from point B to A. So with the change in price of a commodity, there is a movement along a fixed supply curve. Rather, with the change in the price of a commodity, there is no shift in the supply curve of a commodity. Now, let's see the non own price determinants of supply, also called change in supply, and they are caused by change in other factors other than price of a commodity. And these factors, other than price of a commodity, shift the supply curve either to the left or to the right. Any factor that increase supply of a commodity shifts the supply curve to the right, and those factors that decrease the supply of a commodity shift the supply curve to the left. Now, let's see the factors that shift the supply curve either to the right or to the left. The first factor is price of inputs or cost of production. As the cost of production or the price of inputs increases, then the supply of a commodity will decline and any factor that declines supply of a commodity shifts the supply curve to the left. In other ways, increase in price of inputs shifts the supply curve to the left. Decline in price of input or cost of production increases supply of a commodity and any factor that increases supply of a commodity shifts the supply curve to the right. In short, decline in price of inputs or cost of production shifts the supply curve to the right. Technology is another determinant. If farmers employ advanced technology, then the supply of a commodity will increase. And increase in supply of a commodity shifts the supply curve to the right. But if farmers employ backward technology, the supply of a commodity will decline. And decline in supply of a commodity shifts the, the supply curve to the left. Price of related goods is another determinant. If, there, if a firm produces two goods X and Y, a rise in the price of X will decline the supply of Y, and a fall in the price of X increases the supply of Y. For example, Elico produces two commodities, leather jacket and leather shoes. Now, if the price of leather shoes remains unchanged, and if there is a rise in the price of leather jackets, then Elico will use the materials which were used for the production of leather shoes for the production of leather jacket. Then what would happen to the supply of leather shoes? The supply of leather shoes will decline. Conversely, if Elico produces leather jacket and leather shoes again, now if the price of leather shoes remains unchanged and if there's a decline in the price of leather jacket, then Elico will use the resources which were used for the production of leather jacket to the production of leather shoes. 
and then the supply of leather shoes will increase. So if the firm produces two related goods, then a rise in the price of one of the commodity will decline the supply of the other and a fall in the price of one of the commodity will increase the supply of the other. Tax is another determinant with increase in tax then producers will supply less of a commodity and shift the supply curve to the left and with a fall in the tax imposed by the government supply of a commodity will increase and it shifts the supply curve to the right. Another determinant is weather condition. If there is good weather condition, then the supply of a commodity will increase. And if there is bad weather condition, then the supply of a commodity will decline and it, it shifts the supply curve to the left. The another determinant is number of producers or sellers. If there are large number of producers or sellers in the market, then, sup then supply of a commodity will increase. And with a decline in the number of producers or sellers, then supply of a commodity will decline and it shifts the supply curve to the left. Future price expectation is another determinant. If farmers expect higher prices in the near future, then the supply of a commodity will decline. And if farmers expect lower future prices, then the supply of a commodity will increase. The objective of the firm is also another determinant. If the farmer's objective is expansionary, then the supply of a commodity will increase and shift the supply curve to the right. And if the firm's objective is contractionary, then the supply of a commodity will decline and it shifts the supply curve to the left. Students, this is all about the second revision lesson of Unit 2. Stay safe, stay home. Thank you.